views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Coming up on this digital perspective as we go front and center with a jazz artist who's actually turning pain into purpose. We'll talk about that plus a whole lot more on this digital perspective with yours truly, Darren Hyman. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, you speak on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines of Light. Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life. Make a difference in someone's life. Express what's in your heart and your mind. Share your perspective. And hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Hyman. Of course, we thank you for joining us. As always, you can watch Perspectives here on Bronx S Channel 67. If you want to find out more information, we, of course, encourage you to go to our website at bronxnet.org. There you can find out about this show and all the other shows that we have on our Bronxnet platform. We also encourage you to stay connected to us via our social media platforms. That's Bronxnet TV. And if you're looking to reach me personally, uh, my Facebook page, the professional page is Darren C. Jaime. And then also on Instagram and Twitter at DC Jaime 23. There you can find out some information and possibly some inspiration as well. Well, coming up front and center on our show, we're talking with a renowned jazz artist, multiple Grammy-nominated artist. She's actually got her first recording out in about 10 years. These past few years have been quite challenging for her, dealing with the passing of her husband, renowned architect Phil Freeland, and also from ALS, and then her sister, Dr. Debbie Pierce, from cancer, who died six months later. But In tribute to them, she has released a new album, and we are pleased to have with us none other than Nina Freeland, who's our guest here on Perspectives. Trying to keep it together, Nina. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Thank you for being with us here on the show, Nina Freeland. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Darren. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for having me. No, I'm glad to have you. And uh, really, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to have you sharing with us here on the show. And uh, You're keeping busy these days. And as I start off in the lead, uh, talk a little bit about taking your pain and actually turning it into purpose. So first of all, let me first give you condolences on both your husband and your sister. I guess I'll ask for the real question first. How you doing? Well, I'm doing. I'm Mm -hmm. doing. You know, I'm swimming in that real thick uh, experience of grief. And it is thick. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm so glad that I have my music. And I'm so glad that I have story. Um, these, these places in my life give me a container to put my grief in. Does it make it go away? No. Does it um, give me a sense of purpose? Why, yes. Mm-hmm. Why, yes. And does it give me connection with others who are going through similar things? Yes. But it doesn't change the fact that you can't... Um, you can't ignore or get away from grief. It's ever present. Right. And so you've come up with your first album in about 10 years. Uh, and so this album really, as I said, comes after the experiences that you've had, the death of your husband and then also uh, the death of your sister. But from a musical perspective, were you, were you done for a while or what was the, what was the catalyst? How'd you, where were you before this album came on? Well, I mean, I was living my life. I'm an artist citizen. So I live on, uh, in any 24 hour day, I'm lucky if I have 75 to 90 minutes on stage. That's that's mm-hmm. a great day, right? Right. But most days your feet are on the ground and you are going to the grocery store and you are living your life and you are dealing with the way life presents itself to you. And in my case, ALS was a journey of three and a half years with my husband. So we got the diagnosis and it's a progressive, slow, in some sense, slow um, um, process where he lost the ability to use um, his voluntary muscles. And it was excruciating, you know, watching these small steps of loss. 
Um, so I had to come off of being Nina Freelon on stage and live my life. My sister, Carly, was diagnosed with lung cancer, and it seems like in, in a minute she was out of here. So um, life comes at you fast, and there was no space for me to go into the studio and sort of create um, a, mu a, a, a musical moment of my imagination. Um, this record, Time Traveler, is an anthem for my own grieving. It's a space where I take the music that I love, that Phil loved, uh, music that I have a history with, and I just sit with it. And it was an incredible experience. I didn't even know if I could still sing. Right. I didn't even know if I could still have anything come up and out because singing is such an emotional enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, but what I found was a brokenness, but a beautiful brokenness, mm -hmm. you know, an authenticity. I wouldn't recommend that anybody have anything difficult happen in order for them to express. Right. But for me, I'm singing from where I am, where I am right now. It's mm -hmm. not where I was, it's where I am. And so all those experiences, you'll hear it in the voice. And, um, and that, was, that was a revelation for me. Yeah. And I know we were talking just a little bit before we went on. And when you came out with this album, there was really, from your part, a low expectation? Well, I tried to keep, I, as my grandma used to say, I tried to sweep my own porch. Mm -hmm. I, I was just putting out there what spirit said put out there and not worry about, oh, what are people gonna think? And oh, how's it gonna sound? And oh, is this gonna meet with the market expectations? All that I put to the side. I had to do this. I had to speak from the voice that I have in 2021. And it was a lot of trusting trusting that music is a sturdy enough bridge to hold me up. And it did not let me down. And when you talk about the album itself and really getting it out there um, with the expectations, I think in some ways it exceeded expectations because you put your story out there, people were able to resonate with it, and it had a far greater reach, I think, probably, like we said, than, than you even expected. Talk to us about how that actually you know, morphed out that more and more people were able to actually latch on, affirm, and identify with the very pain that you were going through. You know, Darren, it's so funny. When you are honest, mm -hmm. when you are authentic, when you are totally and unashamedly you, you give other people permission to do the same. We hide our grief. We act like everything's cool. I'm good. Strong black woman syndrome. You know, we keep the face, the mask on. And it hurts us because we need each other. Nobody goes into a closet when they're grieving and comes out in two years and is like, I'm cool. Right. We need each other. We need to say when we're hurting. We need to express when we're broken and give ourselves um, a, a moment uh, for healing and for self-care because we deserve to care for ourselves. And this, making this record was a way for caring for me. Nina, loving myself enough to say, you know what, girl, whatever comes up, comes out, and it's all good because you are telling your truth. And little did I know, Jazz Radio embraced me, said, girl, where you been? Mm -hmm. You know, let me play this music. Um, we so glad to have you back. Wow, this is so beautiful. Or I can feel, you know, the emotion. This is, but I didn't go looking for that. Right. I went looking for some self-healing and what I got was, oh my goodness, such wonderful, wonderful response. I, I'm, I'm really humbled by it to tell you the truth. Yeah, awesome work. I want to take a quick break, come back and talk a little bit more with you. Uh, coming up after the break, talk about your music, talk about your podcast. She's got an amazing podcast that I think will, uh, help more out too. So stay with us. Perspectives continues. Nina Freeland, our guest here. We'll be right back in a moment.
Back here on Perspectives, here with multiple Grammy-nominated artist, Nina Freeland, who's joining us here, sharing a little bit about her new album that's out after 10 years, uh, really taking her pain and turning it into purpose uh, in her new album, and really uh, an opportunity to talk about her life, her experience. And uh, Nina, as we were talking in the last segment, we talked a little bit about how the album was born, but from your perspective, how does this actually compare to the other music that you put out? As I said, you know, we told you, we told our audience, you know, you, you've been nominated for Grammys before, but, but this one right here is definitely a little different. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've been in this business for over almost 30 years. So I have uh, 11 CDs. I was on Sony Records. I was on Concord Records. And uh, this one I produced myself. Um, you know, when an artist goes into the studio to create a record, I did a tribute to Stevie Wonder called Tales of Wonder. I went through his catalog. Um, I reached out to, um, you know, to his people to get background. I, you know, you do your research. And then you look inside and you see what it is that you love. Um, this process was different. I looked at, I looked at a, a big concept, time. How much of it do we have? How much do we wish we had? Time, is it real? The physicists say it's not real. They say it's an illusion. Um, but when you don't feel like you have enough of it, it really does feel real. So a lot of the tunes have time in the title or they talk about time. Uh, there's a beautiful old standard called Time After Time that I sing. There's a song by the old um, rock singer, singer-songwriter Jim Croce called Time in a Bottle. And they all bring a little bit of perspective um, to our sense of time, the one non-renewable resource. Mm -hmm. We chase a whole lot of things, which you may be able to get you some more money. You may be able to get you some more stuff. But you um, think when your time is up, ding. So time this is up. Is book. They say time is money, but time is also time. Right. And if you don't have enough of it, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just looking at um, staying in the moment, staying in the present moment, music has the capacity to carve time. You know, you can enter into a song and it's like you're living in this world that the song created just for five five minutes, six minutes. You can be transported back to 1971 or wherever it was when you first met that song. It was a lot of sort of looking at the music that I, my husband and I loved when we were um, first dating and how um, how a tune like um, Val, Val Simpson's um, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, when we first encountered that song, it was a great love song in the, um, in, the, in the light of grief. Ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough. If you need me, call me no matter where you are, no matter how far. That takes on a whole nother nother. It takes on a belief that you can reach through space and time to, to, to connect with your beloved. And so all the songs have sort of this layered meaning um, in my, in my um, reality in this moment. Right. And now you're making the most of your time. I mean, you've, you, you've taken the time on the pain side and now the purpose side is really going forward. The album is out. But then also I want to talk to you about this podcast because uh, in this podcast that you have, you're, you're dealing with the issue of grief. I'm an accidental podcaster. Accidental. I am okay. an accidental podcast. Okay. Um, I've been a journaler from way back, from high school, writing thoughts down and writing poetry. I've always, I mean, I think that's akin to the storyteller spirit that I have as a singer. Well, so my husband passed, my sister passed, and all of these thoughts, these dreams, these notions, these images were coming up. Sometimes so fast, I couldn't write them down. So I started speaking them into my voice memo on my phone. Mm -hmm. So I shared some of these musings with a friend of mine. She said, girl, that's a podcast. I said, a podcast? This is so personal. I mean, how can I, what? She said, girl, this is a podcast. Your story 
is not just your story. Your story is a universal story. Lots of people are going through what you are going through. And so um, I collaborated with my local um, radio station here, WUNC, and showed them the drafts of some of my scripts. And they loved it. And we've been off to the races and it's been an amazing, amazing journey. Uh, my, my interest in my podcast is not to give advice, is to just tell story. So, um, you know, if you, if you really need advice, uh, I'm a singer, so I'm staying in my lane as a singer and a storyteller. So I move between song and story in the right. podcast. Right. And in some sense, you're also a trauma holder, right? Because there's so many people out there who are actually holding on to this trauma. You're actually holding on to it, but really helping people through it and navigating people through it just by being able to, you know, lend your voice, the song, the story, um, and really helping people to get to uh, another another place. And I know for you, just by w the w conversation right now, never speaking to you before, you got to admit that this is a place probably where you never saw yourself being in. No, I, I had no clue. Uh, you know, I had no clue. And this is really based on, um, I, I, I feel like COVID has brought, you know, this sort of forced isolation has brought uh, a lot of pain, a lot of difficulty. It's heavy, heavy, heavy hitting the um, jazz community and the music community um, and reaching out through through these virtual ways, I don't know that I would have done it if, if I hadn't have been, have, if I had not have been in this situation um, at this moment. So, you know, things where they say everything works together for good, that's what it says in the Bible. So I have to believe it. Yeah, yeah. So where do you go from here? I mean, honestly, you've got the work that's going on with the album and the podcast. Uh, what do you see happening around the corner? Things are starting to open up a little bit. People are starting to travel, just, you know, creeping out. But, you know, the, um, the, the challenge is being creative offstage, as creative offstage as we are on stage, and finding ways to reach our audience through virtual means, through um, you know, getting on a plane and traveling here and there, more of that is starting to happen slowly. You know, it's it's a slow, slow burn, but it is starting to happen. And so I'm looking forward to, you know, years ago, if you put out a record, you'd be out touring that record. Well, that wasn't possible uh, for me, but I was able to reach an audience through social media means, so and through and through radio. Well, let me take a quick break, come back and talk more with you. Uh, enjoying our conversation with Nina. We'll be back in just a few seconds here on Perspectives. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in a few. Back here on Perspectives, Darren Jaime here with you. And uh, yes, we are talking to multiple Grammy-nominated artist, Nina Freeland, who's been sharing with us uh, about her new album that's out after 10 years, uh, to actually taking her pain and turning it into purpose and uh, got a podcast out there. And uh, she's very busy doing some things and really paying it forward for a lot of people. And uh, Nina, as we were talking before about just the work of you know, sharing your story and being able to share your story and, and, and having that podcast. I think that uh, it transcends into the hearts and minds of so many people that uh, a person of your caliber, right, who is uh, a multiple Grammy nominated artist, jazz, we hear you, we know you, uh, but yet and still has an everyday life and everyday uh, everyday experiences uh, just, like, just like someone else. So give me a little bit about what you've been hearing on the backside uh, now that you've been able, able to really put these experiences out there. 
You know, you raise a really um, interesting point. People think that when you have some measure of fame, and I wouldn't say for a moment that I'm super famous, um, they think you're insulated from the realities of life. But it isn't true. I'm an artist citizen. I'm a person who, you know, who deals with all of the realities that the rest of us deal with it, deal with on a day-to-day -day, um, basis. Being a public figure, and my husband was a public figure also um, as the architect of record for the National uh, Museum in Washington, D.C., um, having your pain have a public platform, now that is a little different. Um, and I decided that I wasn't going to hide. And my husband decided with his diagnosis that he wasn't going to hide, that he wasn't going to pretend that everything was all right. Um, and it gave us a unique opportunity to be, um, to be comforted by people who maybe we didn't know that well. And the same thing has happened with me with the podcast. People that I don't know have shared their story and have said, oh, girl, your podcast, Black Widow, touched me. I lost my husband 20-something years ago, and I still... And feeling, you know, some kind of way. So it just shows you that um, grief doesn't go anywhere just because you decide you don't want to deal with her. Mm -hmm. She will, she will sit right with you and be patient until you are ready to deal. And what I'm hoping is that great grief is a place where people feel safe, where they feel safe to talk about grief, whether it just happened or whether it's something that happened years and years ago. This gr grief is not. Linear, I, I say on my podcast, she don't own a watch. She does not have a watch. Mm -hmm. So if you look at your watch and say, well, it's been long enough, you can forget it because time means nothing. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, it's okay not to be okay, right? And I think that that's the big thing. We spend a lot of time trying to act like we're okay, um, trying to portray like we're okay. Right. But when grief hits, you know, but, but at the same time, we're slapping our kids around, we're driving too fast, we're snapping out at co-workers, you know, and we think it's just because they're acting off, we're grieving. Right. That's grief. Mm -hmm. Transmuted into some other kind of unpleasant behavior, and we don't even remember. We're not eating, we're not sleeping, we're sleeping too much, we're eating too much. But, you know, all of these things are aspects of a grieving, broken heart. And sometimes when you just sit down and say, you know what, that was pretty crummy what happened. Mm -hmm. That was bad. And that hurt. That is the beginning of the self-love, of acknowledging that you are a human and that you are sensitive. Especially, I have to say, our men folk who are taught stiff up a lip, don't let them see you cry, you know, that old temptation song, I wish it would rain. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah. yeah. We have to let, we have to find space where it's okay. And it doesn't mean you are weak because that same kind of behavior that says, I'm going to hold on and not show it, is what lands you in the hospital with a heart attack or right. some other kind of crazy condition. Um, so, you know, I think it's time especially now when our losses are multiply, are, are layered, right? So, you know, we lost so-and-so, passed away, and then it's multiplied because we can't funeralize them. And you know Black folk like a good funeral. We can't right. do it. And then maybe there were some unspoken things that we wish we had a cure put a wood on, and on and on and on, losing a job, having these changes brought in by COVID. All these things are grief. They may be little compared to something else, but mm -hmm. it's still a grief. Yeah. So uh, before we get out of here, I want to get people an opportunity to find out how they can connect with you and how they can find out not just about the album, get connected to the podcast, the work. What do they do? Well, you know, I'm not the best Facebook girl, but I'm getting better. This better. is for children. You have children so they can show you how to tweet and all that stuff. So I'm getting better with that. So I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram every now and then. I don't tweet that often, but when I do, 
you can be sure it's something yeah. interesting. <laughs> and we saw, and, and, and listen, we just saw the information come up on the screen so people have an opportunity to see uh, how they can get connected to you via social media. Uh, and of course, we know when you get on there, it's gonna be something to say, something to say. Yeah, I try not to, I try not to just be, you know, blah, 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 this is what I had for lunch. Um, right. But there's a lot of traffic out there, just a lot of, of, of buzz, and you have to kind of pick and choose, because you can go down a rabbit hole and never come out again. So, um, but I'm happy for what you're doing, you know, um, creating a space to, to talk about things that are important, because sometimes, Instead of having a wide view, we need to have a really narrow view of mm -hmm. what's right in front of our faces so that we can deal with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to talk because, you know, there's a lot of people who are dealing with this, you know, and again, not just, you know, your, your husband, your sister, uh, and if it's not ALS cancer, you know, people are dealing with COVID uh, and this, and this variants and the viruses. And so the end result is all the same. And the reality is, is that we're all going to find ourselves in the same place, mm. trying to have to navigate and deal. But thank you for having an outlet, and thank you for, um, you know, not being selfish and actually sharing your story and sharing uh, what you've been through. Uh, because honestly, you're actually paying it forward for somebody else. So, oh, appreciate you, know, you. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. All righty. Well, listen. You know, you got to come back. Uh, that that door is open, so make sure that you come thank on back. You. And uh, we love to have you back. Nina Freeland, our guest here on Perspectives. Thanks again, Nina, for being Thank with us. Thank you. Thank you. You take care. All righty. Now, I want you to know now, viewers, this, we're out of show, but certainly want to thank Nina for being with us. A great conversation. And it's a really heartfelt conversation. When you talk about grief and loss, this is something that a lot of people go through. And if you don't confront it, it has a way of confronting you. And I can tell you from personal experience, I've not managed it well in times past. But I recognize when you can deal with it, uh, it can make you a better person and it can also help the people that are around you better. So thanks, Nina, again for uh, being with us and sharing with us here on Perspectives. I'm Darren Jaime saying take care. God bless. That was my perspective. Make sure to share your perspective. You don't know. It just might make a difference in somebody else's life. Until next time we meet, take care. God bless. We'll see you soon. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective, which shines a light, because it might make a difference in someone else's life. Make a difference.